Yeah. This last hour has been a lot of fun to listen to because we've been engaging in what seems like a very thoughtful, fruitful, intelligent exercise in secular moral reasoning, which is an important thing to do. But I think why we all came here is because you seem to be claiming to do something much, much more interesting than that. Namely, that uh, you could appeal to science to say something that's objectively true about morality, right. rather than simply use science as a way to feed us facts into the normal secular moral reasoning that we'd all like to think we could engage in. Yet when you put down the philosophical cornerstone of your case, you seem to appeal to common sense, sort of low-hanging fruit. Wouldn't everybody say it's objectively wrong or it's really bad, as you put it, when, when you sort of qualify your statement? Wouldn't you say it's bad to throw acid on someone's face? We'd all say it's bad, but that's not the philosophically interesting case that you were mm. uh, proposing to make. So um, it seems like you may be caught between either making a common sense argument on the one hand or an inability to define your position in a strong sense on the other hand. How are you making that really interesting claim that we can turn to science to tell us what's objectively morally true without simply referring to the low-hanging fruit of throwing acid on people's faces and so on? Yeah, well, yeah good question. Uh, well, the moment you grant that we're talking about well-being, uh, that we're right to talk about well-being, we can't conceive of, of something else to talk about in this space, uh, then all of the facts that determine well-being become the, the facts of science because, because well-being is emerging out of, of the laws of nature in some way. Our conscious states are constrained quite clearly by the laws of nature, whatever they turn out to be. If they entail ectoplasm rising off the brain at death and going to the Christian hell, we're still talking about the way the universe is and, si and that would have to fall into, into the purview of some completed science. Now obviously there's no reason to believe in, in any of that. So you could ask a question like just how important is compassion, say? I mean, what, what is compassion? Is it, what, is, what is the genetic basis for compassion? Is there a, um, what are the practices and uses of attention and institutions that, that, that allow compassion to thrive or, or diminish it? And if there's a trade-off, I mean, just how important is compassion and how, if we have a, a tension between compassion and bureaucratic efficiency, say, what is the right balance there? Now, again, these are all the, the, the details, the level of brains and the level of lived experience are incredibly complicated. If you get to, to conditions where it's just not at all clear which way to go, you're, you're getting to conditions where figuring out which way to go is, in detail would be incredibly complicated, it, it, much more complicated than economics, and economics is, is still struggling to be a science. But I mean, nobody, so, so clearly we don't understand economic systems with any uh, uh, real success at this point. We can keep being blindsided by how they behave, but nobody doubts that there are right and wrong ways to respond to a, a global banking catastrophe, say. And, um, I think to, 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 to carve out a space of truth, a real truth, a space where we recognize there are truth claims to be made about good and evil, or truth claims to be made about economics, all we have to acknowledge are the easy cases. I mean, that's why I appeal to the easy cases, because it's like, it's, you know, with economics, we, we, there, uh, economists can disagree about how to respond to uh, uh, a global economic crisis. It's the science is such and the, and the complexity of the system under analysis is such that we may never be confident about the right answer, but we know there are wrong answers. If, 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 an econ if someone got on CNN and said, well, I've got the solution, let's just destroy all material wealth. Let's just have a huge potlatch where we just burn buildings and ruin everything. Okay, that's, and then we'll have to build it again, and that's a brilliant idea. It's going to put everyone to work. Okay, that's pretty clearly the wrong answer. Now, so... We know, so we know there are better, we know there are right and wrong answers. We know there are ways to fail where your beliefs can be erroneous. And that's, that's um, I'm arguing this is, if it's true for, for something like economics, it's also true for morality.